So hi folks, welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we're going to take a closer look at the S30 Smart Telescope from ZWO. It's one of the most affordable smart telescopes on the market today. And in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the specifications of this smart telescope. And we are going to image the sun, the moon, and some deep sky objects to find out what this smart telescope is all about. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Currently available for $349, the Seastar S30 Smart Telescope comes with a compact tripod, a solar filter for safe solar observations, a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer, and a sturdy black carrying case. Links to ZWO and reputable telescope retailers in the USA and Europe can be found in the video description below. I did not receive any payment to do this review, it's entirely based on my own experiences and opinions. Let's take a look at the technical specifications first. The Seastar S30 is an apochromatic refractor telescope with a 30mm aperture and a 150mm focal length, giving it an f5 focal ratio. It includes extra low dispersion glass, which promises sharp and true color images of the night sky. The telescope also features an ASI 662MC camera color sensor with a 1080x9020 resolution and it has a secondary wide-angle lens which can be used for object targeting. The S30 has an image scale of 4 arc seconds per pixel and a field of view of 1.2x2.13 degrees. Using the F's framing mode, the field of view can be expanded to 2.39x4.25 degrees, allowing the S30 to capture wide field views of the night sky. While the image scale is less detailed than the ideal 1 to 2 arc seconds per pixel for deep sky imaging, it should still work well for large celestial objects like the Andromeda Galaxy. Let's see what this smart telescope can do. After powering on the telescope, the Seastar S30 can be controlled via the Seastar app, available for iOS and Android mobile devices. When connecting for the first time, the Seastar app will probably prompt a firmware update for the telescope. Simply follow the on-screen instructions to complete the update, after which your telescope will be ready for use. The telescope creates its own Wi-Fi signal, allowing you to connect directly to the telescope without needing a mobile network. The name of the Wi-Fi signal is usually S30 followed by an underscore and some other numbers. The standard password for C-Star devices is usually 12345678. After connecting to the Wi-Fi signal, you're ready to use the app to control the telescope. First, let me walk you through how I captured the sun with the Seastar S30. I tapped on open arm at the top of the app, which pointed the telescope's arm forward. The main screen of the app shows several categories, including stargazing, solar system and scenery. It also shows current weather for your location, as well as recommended objects. To view the sun, I clicked on the solar system tab, showing various objects in our solar system, and I selected the sun. A warning appeared, reminding me to install the solar filter before pointing the telescope at the sun. ZWO made some significant improvements in terms of user experience with the S30 compared to its predecessor, the S50. For example, attaching the solar filter to the telescope lens like this is much easier as compared to the Seastar S50, where it was a bit trickier. Another upgrade as compared to the S50 is the added wide field lens, which makes it easier to locate objects like the sun or the moon in the sky. I used the wide field view and the slew feature to point the S30 telescope at the sun manually before switching to the teleview. While the telescope can find objects automatically, I do appreciate the extra option to manually slew and use the wide field lens to center objects in the teleview. This feature is also useful for daytime observations when using the scenery mode. After centering the sun in the teleview, I tapped on the tracking icon visible at the top right of the app and the S30 automatically started tracking the sun. I then tapped the autofocus feature to focus on the sunspots that were visible that day. I repeated this using the 4 times zoom and that worked flawlessly. I took a photo by selecting photo and clicking the large shutter button at the bottom of the screen. After that, I decided to capture a one minute video of the sun. 
Regular videos are stored in MP4 format on the Seastar S30 64GB internal memory card. Here's a clip from that video showing the many sunspots that were visible that day. Next, I selected the raw video mode in the app and recorded another one minute video. Raw videos are high quality AVI files which can be downloaded and used for further post processing using free software like AutoStackert, which lets you stack the best quality frames to improve your final photo. These AVI files are much larger, about 1.5 gigabytes per minute, and they are recorded at 12 frames per second. You can capture up to 10 minutes per AVI file and they are stored on the internal memory card. You can transfer this to your computer using the USB-C cable. After using the AVI file to stack the best quality frames in AutoStackert, I ended up with this decent image of the sun. However, I have to say that the Seastar S50 with its larger aperture and longer focal length handles fine details of the sun better. But the S50 also costs about $150 more than the Seastar S30. And I have to say that the weather was far from ideal when I captured these videos. All right, folks, the weather has been really challenging and cloudy in the Netherlands lately. But let's see if we can find some clear skies tonight to do some deep sky astrophotography as well with the Seastar S30. The weather in the Netherlands has been very cloudy and humid over the past month, as you can see in this timeless video I made, giving me limited opportunities to test the S30. Still, I managed to take advantage of the brief 15 to 30 minute gaps in the clouds to capture some famous deep sky objects with this smart telescope. I was pleased with the internal anti-dew heater, which you can switch on to prevent the telescope from fogging up. A small smart telescope like the S30 is actually perfect for these short breaks in the clouds since it only takes minutes to start tracking and imaging objects after powering on the telescope. Let me show you how this works and what I captured. Before imaging deep sky objects, I noticed Jupiter shining brightly in the night sky. So I decided to take a quick look at the largest planet in our solar system. After selecting Jupiter and clicking Go Gazing, the telescope swiftly slew to the planet and performed some automatic calibration and image enhancement routines, which took about two minutes in total. While planets are very tiny targets requiring much larger telescopes to detect detailed surface features, I was delighted to spot Jupiter's Galilean moons as bright dots nearby circling the planet. These inner moons orbit Jupiter in just a few days, so their changing positions each night are fascinating to observe. Next, I turn to the Pleiades, also known as Messier number 45 a stunning cluster of bright blue stars. It was one of the recommended objects displayed in the Seastar app based on my location. After selecting it and clicking Go Gazing, the telescope automatically located the cluster and began capturing and stacking 10 second photos. Stacking more images improves the signal to noise ratio, revealing more details and the Pleiades perfectly fit the S30's field of view. If you want to move the position of the telescope, you can use the app's virtual sky atlas by clicking on its icon on the bottom right. In the virtual atlas, you can adjust the telescope's position by dragging the red rectangle to refine your view and click go to to align the telescope accordingly. The blue rectangle represents the telescope's current position. Despite imaging from my urban light polluted portal class 8 balcony under poor sky conditions, the Pleiades were clearly visible, even without the use of the optional internal light pollution filter. The recently introduced AI denoise feature in the app reduces light pollution and allows some basic edits like exposure, contrast and saturation adjustments. Perfect for beginners who don't want to spend lots of time and money on paid software like Photoshop or Pixinsight. Here's my final processed image of M45 with a total exposure time of about 50 minutes. What do you think? On another night with brief gaps in the clouds, I attempted to capture the Andromeda Galaxy, our nearest spiral galaxy and home to one trillion stars. 
Using the Seastar app, I selected M31 from the recommended objects. The telescope automatically slewed to its position and started imaging the object. Since Andromeda spans about 3 degrees of the sky, I accessed the Virtual Sky Atlas using the bottom right icon to check if the galaxy would actually fit within the Seastar S30's field of view. The view was tight, so I decided to magnify it by about 1.8 times using the framing option. This triggered the mosaic feature of the app where the telescope photographs different sections of the sky and stitches them together to create a single image. The maximum magnification is two times the S30's field of view, but note that creating mosaics takes extra time as larger portions of the sky need to be captured and integrated. That said, this feature is fantastic as it provides greater control over how you frame objects in your final picture. After about 40 minutes, clouds returned, halting the session before the total image was done. Here's a cropped image of M31 that the S30 did capture. Pretty impressive when considering the telescope's price and the limited imaging time. One final deep sky image I want to share with you is M42, the famous Orion Nebula, our closest stellar nursery in the night sky. This time, I only had about 10 minutes of clear skies, but I was amazed at how quickly the telescope produced an acceptable image. For this object, the S30 automatically used its internal dual-band filter to bring out the ionized hydrogen and oxygen of the nebula while blocking artificial light pollution. After just a few minutes, I experimented with the AI denoise feature and the Orion Nebula already looked quite good. After about 10 minutes, I had to end the session due to clouds, and this is the final image of the Orion Nebula. <laughs> yes, I know, it's one of the brightest nebulas in the night sky, but I think the result is pretty impressive, considering only 10 minutes of imaging and very poor weather conditions. As mentioned before, the weather in the Netherlands has been very poor lately, but one early morning I spotted the waning moon in a hazy sky. I quickly grabbed my S30 and set it up on the rooftop of my backyard shed to capture it. Capturing the moon is similar to capturing the sun, but of course no solar filter is needed. I selected the moon in the app and used the wide field lens view to locate it in the morning sky. After centering it, I clicked the tracking icon and the S30 began tracking the moon automatically. I quickly activated autofocus and the S30 focused well on the moon's craters. I decided to take one regular 1 minute MP4 video and here's a snippet of that footage. I also captured a 1 minute raw video and I processed that video using autostackert and Registex. Here's my final image of the moon. Despite the very hazy conditions and the limited visibility, I was quite happy with this image. Before giving you my final verdict, let's review some additional features of the Seastar S30. With station mode, you can connect the telescope to your home Wi-Fi network, allowing you to control it from indoors while the S30 captures the night sky for you. The S30 can also save individual photos alongside stacked images, enabling you to manually download and stack the highest quality photos using free software like Deep Sky Stacker. For deep sky imaging, you can also extend the exposure time to 30 seconds, though ZWO recommends sticking to the default 10 seconds due to the Seastar S30's LS tracking mode. It would be interesting to see if ZWO includes equatorial tracking options in the future, enabling longer exposures and eliminating field rotation during extended integration times. The Community tab is another excellent feature, allowing users to share images and engage with others. Lastly, the S30's battery lasts for several hours and can be recharged during its use, ensuring uninterrupted imaging sessions. Let me give you my final verdict here. If you're looking for a way to enhance your views of the night sky without spending a fortune, the Seastar S30 is an excellent smart telescope that gets the job done. 
If you're new to astrophotography, the easy-to-use Seastar app makes it possible for complete beginners to engage in advanced stargazing and astrophotography without getting into a steep learning curve of how to operate telescopes, mounts and cameras. Simply use the app to control the telescope, select an object and you'll be stargazing in minutes while the S30 does all the hard work for you. This compact lightweight telescope provides impressive images of the night sky for its price. This being said, every telescope has its limitations and the S30 is no exception. If you are primarily interested in planetary observations, I would advise you to save up for a larger aperture telescope like a Dobsonian or an SCT. The S30 also offers lower resolution images as compared to other smart telescopes like its bigger sibling, the Seastar S50. Additionally, the LS tracking mode of the Seastar limits its exposure time for deep sky astrophotography to maximum 30 seconds and causes field rotation during longer integration times. Despite these limitations, the Seastar S30 is one of the most affordable smart telescopes on the market today and perfect for folks who want to get into enhanced stargazing and astrophotography without breaking the bank. Even as an experienced astrophotographer, I really enjoyed using and reviewing this tiny but mighty smart telescope. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to help grow the channel. Thanks for watching and clear skies.